smaller stem is iron. And uh, as you can see from some of the pictures, he doesn't look as, uh, as an everyday kid. When he was uh, six months old, we realized that he has epilepsy. He has, um, mm, he has seizure nearly every half an hour, so he was in a very, very bad condition. And this is how he looks like at the moment. He is seven years old. He is delayed. He, has, he needs a lot of support, but he can talk and walk. Actually, the, the magic story began when he was in this condition. With my co-founders, um, that nearly every one of us has got disabled and non-disabled kids. And uh, we just realized that we got these kids, we, well, we can be sad or we can be negative, but we try to do something for them or do something, something positive for the story, try, try to get out something positive for the story. So we decided that we are going to do something with the playgrounds because we realized that our kids are not able to go to the playground. And why playground? Because this is the first platform of socialization. And the other reason why we started with the playground because that's the place where I can chit chat with my friends. And all the time we, want to, we wanted to go to the playground, we just realized that there is nothing for Aaron. He cannot sit, he cannot walk, there is nothing for him. So this is why we launched Magic Me, and the other reason was that we wanted to show our kids the value of our disabled kids for the non-disabled one. So we decided that it's going to be a social business, which is uh, which is got money from the market and not from uh, foundations or different kind of funds. So this is the first equipment we designed because uh, we decided to have something without the wheelchair. And actually, this is the first wheelchair-free equipment, I must say, in Europe, which, which is easy to use for those who are not strong enough to hold, for the babies, and for those disabled who are not able to see at all. And again, this is very important that we give the opportunity for everyone to play together, regardless their age and their abilities. And now these are the... I think, I, I hope that I will tell you things which you experienced yourself or at least you heard that these are real, real, real challenges. Uh, the first that I put there is a lack of hard law, which means that um, the European Union has just saying that inclusive play is important, accessibility is important, the building environment, accessible building environment is important, but there is no law for punishment. Uh, legally, you can sue the country if they don't accomplish the accessible building environment as an individual, and it's no nice to be sued, but that's it, nothing is happening. Why is it important for us to have a legal background of it? There are several reasons. The first is whenever we negotiate with in, in, uh, invest, investors, the first question is what is the legal requirement behind? The second is that at the end of the day, every municipality is maximizing, maximizing voting. And unfortunately, they don't think that those who have got disabled kids will vote or something. They, they, just don't, they just don't exist, those families. The second I listed, it's empathizing with the issue, which means that the first question was a government in London that why do these kids need to get off of the wheelchair? So we realized that those who, who are not in this situation, it's very hard to explain why is it important to play together. What can the benefits from everyone that if they play together? The other thing is we have to explain that sitting, is the, sitting in the wheelchair, okay, they are going to the castle, the, the wheelchair free castle, and then doing what? So this means that there are several families and several kids who are excluded from the playground. Babies who are not able to sit yet, those who are not able to use the wheelchairs and those who are not able to sit at all. And we are talking about a huge number. In every 20 families, one is affected with any kind of disabilities, and this is a growing number. Yeah. We've been taking part in an accelerator program, and they say, don't mention that this is a social business, because they will, say, they will think that this is not earning money. The, the other thing, which is so true in Hungary, that they mixing the social business with NGO. And I always have to find that we are not an NGO. And why is it important not to be an NGO? Because we want to earn money from the market and not from some donors or something. 
But that's true that, for example, in Berlin or in London, there are the stereotypes are guess differently. They absolutely support social businesses. I guess Eastern Europe is something. I put it on my um, presentation that there is no economic environment, which means that it's not easy to get money from an investor if, it's, if, if it is a social uh, business. And what I experienced is that there is a hype towards startups, that everyone wants to get money very fast and very huge money, and this is not true for social businesses. And that actually this is my frustration that those who are looking for IT solution, they always forget that there are some humans around. And although, don't get me wrong, I like digitalization and I, feel, I do believe it. But still, I mean, we have to start somewhere in the playground as little kids. So this is a very big challenge for us to jump that we are an offline platform and still to raising attention or being at the being in different competitive competitions. Um, that really, this is we are competing with other online solutions. The financial resources, I guess. I, I hope that I explain that if we don't have investors, we have to live from the market, which is we decided to live from the market, but that it, this is a very, very uh, hard job to do. And because we don't have enough uh, financial resources, everyone is working something else. And I have my own projects, which I earn in money with, and that could magic me, unfortunately. The other thing is, which I realize is HR resources. It's very hard to find people who is working for volunteer based. I do not believe anymore in pro bono work because uh, I learned myself pro bono. I learned myself, and this is one lesson I learned: no more pro bono work. It's not working. There is not enough people to run the business, and there are always tasks which is lacking behind because we have, we have no people to do it. And I think the the hardest thing even today is to, although we have a strategy, but to stick into the strategy. Because if anyone is asking any, anything from us, we are ready to give it, although it's not fitting to our strategy. The, the other um, hard thing to do is to find the perfect team. And it's not the, the, because of lack of money, but it happens in every startup life that you start with someone and that it realizes that we are not matching. And the other thing is, of course, that when we started, we did not realize that it's, it's a huge amount of work what we have to invest in. It required a lot of energy, not just from us, but from, from our family, who needs to support us. And probably I would start to find funds earlier, or in a different way. I don't know how, but in a different way. Because it, it, it is very, it, sometimes it's very demotivating if you, if, you, if you don't have any money, you are just working for the issue, which is nice. But at the end of the day, you have to buy the bread. And again, the lesson we learned is that if we are in a selling position, it is always much better to, to, to start with the why. That's why I'm doing this. And that's true that this is why we are in a, um, an easier um, situation, because there is a personal story behind our equipment. But it's, a, but it, but it's again, it's, it's always good to start with the why. Why are you doing what you are doing? Because, okay, everyone wants to earn money, but that's not enough. And the other thing is that uh, when, when, when I realized or when we realized that there is always something to, to wake up, this is our business and not just the money but the issue we are fighting for, it's a good thing. You know, HR people always say that you, you have to find something for wake up every morning because that's the most important thing. And you know, this is, this is, this is very hard to explain to a, a government, a local government that you need to invest in these chives in order to pay less at the end of the day because everyone is paying their medicine, their school, everyone. And we talk, if we're talking about social impact, which is very important in our businesses, then uh, okay, it's a long-term impact, but I do believe that if these kids are meeting at the playground, it will be much easier to find the jobs than they will get older because they will know each other. They know that they are not different. Just a little bit. They have seen a different way. But up until now, like a few months ago, that okay, I, I knew that money is important, but it but it wasn't the biggest obstacle. And um, and a few months ago, we just realized that if we don't if we don't have some investment on some injection, then we can sell our product. But that's it. No new product. No nothing. 
So at the moment, this is the this is the the biggest, the hardest, the most important issue we have to deal with. So we have to put extra effort all on sales, which is difficult without money because I cannot travel. Uh, or we have to find investor, which is also difficult. And we realize that there is no more competition because it's just taking time and no benefit of it. Well, um, we would like uh, ten pieces, of, ten pieces of uh, portfolio. And we would be happy to have magic equipment nearly everywhere in Europe, at least in the biggest, in the biggest cities. Mm -hmm.